In this um, uh, case, we start with a, a woman in gestation week uh, uh, seven. Uh, she had high blood pressure, uh, and she had uh, moved in, uh, in the urine, and obviously she had preeclampsia. There's no rupture of the membranes, uh, CRP is low, uh, but the blood flow in the umbilical cord is low and the child is stressed, and it has to be delivered by a cesarean section. Uh, and the child is small for gestation age, uh, 635 gram. Uh, and obviously that is a risk factor for necrotizing encephalitis and a lot of other complications. Uh, it has an insufficient ventilation, got to be intubated, but after one day you can put it in, in CPAP after surfactant treatment. We have to uh, put umbilical catheters and that is a risk factor for infections for example. We have to take a blood culture that is negative and the CRP is, is normal. We start with total parental nutrition, but we also start with breast milk the first day. We have done our milk in Sweden, uh, and um, we, we increase the amount, and hopefully the child is full fed after two to three weeks. But it needs, of course, intravenous uh, lines for two to three weeks, and that also uh, is a risk factor for infections. Everything goes well, but at day 10, the child gets pale, irritated, they got insufficient ventilation, uh, they oxygenated, and we have to put it in a ventilator. Uh, and they got the abdominal status uh, with abdominal uh, distension, it's dark, you see visible bowel loops, and we got bile stain and residuals. And of course, we do an x ray, and we see portal venous gas, and we got a diagnosis necrotizing encephalitis, which is a life threatening uh, uh, disease. Uh, with uh, uh, inflammation in the intestinal bowel, <coughs> uh, which is really uh, very threatening. Uh, the treatment is bowel rest, total parental nutrition for 10 <coughs> days, growth spectrum antibiotics for 10 days, and of course, symptomatic treatment with inotropic drugs, blood, plasma, uh, <coughs> and sometimes surgery. And necrotizing anticholitis uh, uh, is, of course, quite uncommon in full uh, term infants, but in infants below, in, with, a, with a birth weight below uh, six to, uh, below 1500 grams, the incidence is uh, six to seven percent, and the mortality rate is quite high with 15 to 30 percent. And 20 to 40 percent needs uh, surgery. And the pathogenesis is uh, uh, multifactorial. There's a hypothesis about circulation, low circulation, low mortality, digestion, uh, decreased intestinal barrier, uh, pathogenic bacteria, and high protein intake. Uh, preventive factors is only actually uh, uh, proven that uh, breast milk prevents uh, necrotizing anticholitis. And obviously, uh, there is a need for uh, new uh, prevention strategies to avoid these diseases, and also sepsis and other complications in, in, in the nucleus. And probiotics could be such a, a prevention, uh, and uh, pro probiotics may act in several ways against this complication. It uh, has been shown to reduce; they have been shown to reduce pathogenic bacteria. Uh, they uh, have anti-inflammatory uh, response uh, properties, which have been shown in, in several uh, animal studies. Uh, they uh, increase motility, which have been shown in, in, in humans, but also in animal studies. Uh, they may act uh, on, on the uh, distant organ that's uh, uh, the lung uh, uh, shown in, in animal studies that they uh, increase airway responses and airway inflammation and all, they also uh, uh, may increase intestinal barrier which has been shown both, both in humans but also in animal studies. Uh, so there is a rational for use probiotics uh, in, in, in predators against these diseases. And as you all know, there's all, there have already been published a lot of uh, uh, double-blind placebo-controlled studies. And uh, these uh, were the studies that were included in the meta-analysis 2010 by Deshbandi in pediatrics. Uh, and uh, basically, the inclusion criteria was that the child uh, had a birth weight below 1,500 grams. Uh, and they started with this early product uh, the first week of life, mostly one to three days of age. Uh, 
it's only uh, three uh, uh, studies that have enough power uh, from the beginning to show an effect on, on, on necrotizing anticholitis uh, if the uh, incidence was 6 to 7 percent, as I showed you before. And as you can see, a lot of different uh, uh, strings have been used in all these uh, studies. Uh, the meta-analysis showed a, a significant effect on necrotizing anticholitis, as you can see, an overall effect. Uh, with a reduction from 6% to 2%. Uh, and the number needed to treat was 25. <laughs> that means if you treat 25 prematures uh, at a clinical board, you will save one child from getting necrotizing anticholitis. And that, of course, is a really impressive number. Uh, it's only four studies that really had a significant effect on uh, uh, <coughs> necrotizing, anticholitis, ne necrotizing anticholitis by themselves. Uh, and uh, these, in these studies, uh, they use different uh, probiotic strains. Uh, uh, so, uh, and I will come back to that later when it comes to, to recommend the probiotic strain uh, against necrotizing anticholitis. They did not see any effect uh, on sepsis in this uh, meta-analysis, uh, as, as you can see here. Uh, there were one study that had an effect by, the, by itself. It was studied by Samantha. Can I move it? Ah, you would trust me. Yeah. Uh, it was a significant, overall significant effect on mortality, uh, as you can see here. And the number it needed treat was 20. So if that is true, you, if you treat 20 uh, prematures, you will save, oh, save one child from dying, and that is really impressive. Impressive, of course. Also here, it was uh, not all studies that have an effect, as you can see. It was actually only a study from, uh, well, study from Lynn 2005 and Samantha 2008 that did have an effect on mortality. And as I said, they used different strains. Some of the studies have, have also uh, uh, looked at uh, uh, food tolerance and the time to reach full enteral feeding. Uh, and it was also included in the meta analysis. Uh, and it, uh, the overall effect was that uh, it was two to three days shorter time to reach full enteral feeding in this meta analysis. Uh, there are two studies that have had an effect by itself. It's by Samantha and, and Braga 2011. Um, and that is also interesting since then you can get rid of intravenous lines and perhaps get a better nutrition. There have been a lot of comments on this meta-analysis. This is one comment in the same issue in pediatrics. It, and they concluded that uh, it seems that the probiotics do have an effect on necrotizing enterocolitis and, and maybe also mortality, but no effect on septis as I showed you. But there's not enough data uh, for evidence for uh, the effect on extreme, extreme prematures uh, below 1,000 gram. Uh, and the reason for that is that uh, few children were included in these studies. Uh, so you can, and you can't extrapolate to the, the, the uh, extreme prematures, they say. Uh, not enough data on chronic lung disease either and uh, neurological development and weight gain and nutrition. Uh, and they concluded that we need uh, studies on the extreme low birth weight uh, 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 prematures with sufficient power. And we need to repeat the result of the efficient probiotic strains. If you have a lack of sepsis, it could be uh, interesting what antibiotics you should use. And, and, and um, like Bacillus is almost always resistant against vancomycin. Uh, uh, they are uh, most, they are, could be resistant against cephalosporins and penicillins, but they're mostly sensitive against erythromycin, imipenem, and, and aminoglucosides. There's also been a uh, concern about uh, uh, antibiotic resistant genes and transfer from, from uh, these product strains. Uh, uh, and it has been suggested, suggested that uh, all probiotics on the market, uh, not, none probiotics in the market should have a, a plasmid with a resistant genes. And Rosander uh, and colleagues, they actually removed the two plasmids from one lactobacillus voice strain and got a daughter strain that uh, didn't have this anymore. So quite a fascinating thing to, to do. 
So the conclusion uh, are that progotics as a therapy group it decreases the risk of mortality and necrotizing enterocolitis in very low birth weight prematures and, and reduce time to reach full enterocolitis. No significant, significant effect on sepsis in the meta-analysis. Uh, gut motility I will leave to Claudia, she will discuss that this, this later. Uh, the results of previously efficient probiotic strains should be repeated before a specific probiotic strain can be recommended in, in a new case. Thank you very much. For your